Okay, guys, um, most of you have settled into the class, have started to get going, have kind of figured out a little bit on Canvas. Um, and I do apologize if there's a little bit of confusion. I am new at Canvas myself, um, but, you know, this is working out pretty well. Um, I want to go through the calendar, the discussions, a little bit on the metaphor machine to get you guys going on that. Um, but also give you a hint on the writing assignments coming up. So let me go into it. Um, and I, by the way, I've got two English 101s this summer. Okay. I'm going to go into one of them, but pretty much it's the same stuff. So whatever you do. And let me go through a little bit with the calendar first. And I'll get down to the classical Greek tragedy. We got to talk about Antigone and all this trouble she's causing teenagers. You can't, okay, don't go there. Um, <clears throat> Let's go a little bit on the calendar so you know. Now, um, I apologize if it was a little bit confusing on the calendar. I have a little bit of trouble for some reason. They're kind of mixing up my calendar. Um, but it should be clear now. What I want you guys doing is for today getting, act, I mean, excuse me, scene one and scene two done in Antigone. It's lying around, it's up to around line 490. It's about a third of the way through the play. Um, <clears throat> it's about 15, 20 pages, so not too bad. Um, it's kind of weird, and I do, you know, make sure you get um, the introduction to Antigone, the lesson one down first, um, before you jump into it, so you know kind of where this is coming from. Um, because this is ancient Greek tragedy. This is 2,500 years ago. This is weird stuff, but it's kind of cool. It's stuff that when folks have read Antigone in the past, um, it's hard to believe that there's a character like Antigone um, stomping around the stage 2,500 years ago. Um, but that's what it was, and it made perfect sense to the Greeks, and it's kind of cool today. So, um, but anyway, um, so give the introduction a bit of a, a, a play. Give that lesson one a play um, before you go much further. Watch that one so you get an idea where you know Antigone's really taking place and how it was created. Um, and then read up to around line 490. Again, the page does. I mean, the play does not have pages. So you're going to want to get about a third of the way through the play, a little bit past that. Then what I want you to do, that's the reading assignment. <clears throat> so you're going to be reading it. Watch the motivations of the characters. Look at their situation. Um, the situations of Antigone and Creon are radically different. Um, so is the situation of the Caragos and the Sentry. And it tells you why they're doing what they're doing. So pay attention to that carefully. Um, try to avoid classifying people as good guy, bad guy stuff. Greeks didn't do that. Not the ancient Greeks, at least. So you're going to see things um, kind of fall apart in a way that is pretty much unavoidable. Um, and it's kind of sad. And we don't want to um, try to project our own you know, values on it too quickly. Okay. Then what I'm going to want you to do is write a summary up to around line 490 or so. Okay. Um, from uh, scenes one and two. Um, now, begin again, because this calendar is a little bit, you know, a lot of you guys are just getting settled in. I'd like it done by today. You should be able to get it done by today. If you can get it done by tonight, that's great. If you got to wait till tomorrow, that's fine. Um, but we're going to need to really jump on the essay full steam by um, Friday, Thursday, and Friday. So try to get those going, okay? Um, so, and I won't be really strict on the discussion due dates at first, but don't fall behind, okay guys? Um, get it today or tomorrow. Don't put it off till next week because that's a problem. Um, so get it today or tomorrow. I really would like you to get it done today. And it's summarizing what's going on and I'm going to walk you through, um, you know, kind of a, I, I, I began a, a summary myself and I'll walk you through that. Um, <clears throat> and then what I want you to do is identify and break down, explain three metaphors using the metaphor machine. That's what I'm going to want you to do. And I'll do that with the camera rolling. I'll show you how it's done. Okay. And it's not that tough. Okay. Um, and you should be able to pick up a metaphor machine from the bookstore. No, I'm just kidding. Okay. It's up here. Um, you can do this. Okay. Um, and then we're going to be doing scenes. Um, we're going to be getting rid of that. We're going to be doing scenes three and four tomorrow and then five on Thursday, okay? So try to get, get Antigone, get going on it, get settled in, and uh, get moving on it. It's only 41 pages or something like that, so it's not that bad. Um, and you can get through it. And, hey, it's pretty funky. Why they haven't made this into a movie with, like, you know, some celebrities, I don't know, because it's pretty cool. But no matter. Um, I guess she doesn't have any superpowers, just an attitude. But those are kind of superpowers, right? 
Okay, let's get through Antigone now. So that's the calendar. You know where you are. We're going to have the essay on the 25th. I will really start going through that on the 21st with you. Um, hold tight for a little bit. I'll touch on it before we move on, okay? Now, let me go through the discussions and show you what I want you to do um, with the discussions. Let's uh, bop right in there. Um, here are, and you should be able to go in, you know, and you see... You add your introductory video, video um, to English 101. Um, you go into Classical Greek Tragedy. That's where you go next. So that should be your home page. Um, you got your home page right there. <clears throat> and you watch your introduction to the course. You kind of know what's going on. And then you go into Greek Tragedy. Go down here. These other links, don't worry about them. We're going to get there later, okay? We're in Classical Greek Tragedy. So you click on that. <clears throat> And you know, and you should already know this, and you had lesson one, that gives you the background. That tells you what the metaphor machine is. Let me come up here with my Greek bros. Um, um, that tells you what's going on with Antigone, okay? Um, the basics, the background, and with Greek tragedy. Um, and lesson two, you're watching right now, okay? Um, the discussion where I'm going to want you to summarize things um, is, you know, up here, go to the discussions. And I've started one. Let me get myself out of here. Let's go over here. You hang out. You you behave over there. Um, and I started one. Okay, let's see if I've, I've got um, anything going on here. I, I've got it over here, I think. Um, hopefully it's in that one. Um, maybe it, it didn't register for me. I don't know. Um, no, it didn't show up yet. Okay, let me go ahead and write one, okay? So let's summarize the main things of what's going on here. Um, Antigone uh, confronts her sister Ismene at the beginning of the um, play and wants, I type badly, her to take her side in a rebellion against Creon's new decree that no one shall bury um, their brother Polynices. Now, and a couple of things here. Um, number one, don't worry too much about things like spelling um, or, boy, all these typos and all this kind of stuff. What I want you to do with the discussion is cover the main issues and what it's doing is giving you the play um, and it's allowing you to kind of put it all together in writing and typing things out um, teaches them to you this is you teaching yourself at the discussion area now the discussion area doesn't allow you to see other people's posts until you've done your own um, so make sure you get yours done and then look over what everybody else has done <clears throat> okay um, Ismene refuses to help Antigone um, because, you know, don't worry too much about these, um, is afraid of Creon uh, at the beginning. Um, she sees him as the ruler, even if she does uh, not entirely agree with him. And I can go on, and you guys know that opening scene, and I can then give a little bit more about those other scenes. Creon um, uh, proclaims to everyone in the city that his law to leave the body of Polynices out is just and right. Um, once he hears that his decree has been ignored by someone, he flies into a rage and starts accusing um, different people, including the sentry and the choragus. Um, I think I misspelled that, um, but anyway. Uh, so you get the idea. So it's summarizing it and getting it down. And then what I want you to do is get three metaphors. Um, now, a summary should be pretty thorough. And again, I just want you to teach yourself the play. 
and I want you then to identify three metaphors at the discussion area. Okay, let's do that. Here's the play, and let me walk through some things. And what I would advise you to do, <clears throat> let me go ahead and go to the um, <clears throat> go to the Greek tragedy page, and I would strongly advise you um, to open it up and then download it onto your computer. Download this thing onto here and then move it and you can see this I'm moving it onto my desktop um, and then I open it up on my desktop that's what I've done okay I would advise you to do that. It's easier to work with when you do that and you can do this other funky stuff if you keep it inside of a window it's yeah, it doesn't work quite work so this is a PDF I've gotten on my um, computer and if you prefer to print it out print it out I Think it works a lot better printed out to tell you the truth let me go through some of what's going on in the play and then i'm going to come back to him at the discussion area you can see antigone here and everybody likes antigone she's so cool because she's really nervy and everything and that's that's fun okay um but now notice a couple things that are going on and this is what i want you to notice with the motivations and the situations of the individuals antigone has lost her brother in this um uh fight and this was a fight where her one brother, Polynices, attacked her other brother, Eteocles. Eteocles was the rightful ruler who had replaced their father, Oedipus, who we won't go too far down that right now. Um, but the story of Oedipus is he slept with his mother and had four children, and guess what? Antigone, Ismene, Polynices, and Eteocles are the four children. He didn't know that was his mother at the time. Okay. Um, but anyway, so let's let's not go into that. It's going to start sounding like Jerry Springer or something like that. Um, but Eteocles was the rightful ruler at the start, uh, right before this play, and Polynices attacked him and led a revolt. Um, and notice that Antigone doesn't mention the fact that Polynices attacked his own city, and uh, that's part of Antigone's issue. Um, she's got reason to be pissed off at Creon, but she's also got reason to not be totally cool with Polynices, but she is. Okay, so it's kind of weird. And Ismene also has odd motivations in that she, um, I've heard nothing, I know, and she gets into, you know, how she's just going to behave um, herself. So Ismene doesn't want to cause trouble. She seems to be a little more aware of Polynices, but not too. So um, now here you get this. This is around line 20. They say that Creon has sworn that no one shall bury him, no one mourn for him, but this body must lie in the fields, sweet treasure for carrion birds, to find as they search for food. That's what Antigone said. That is a metaphor. <clears throat> okay. Um, and it's using the words of one thing to describe another. That's when you've got a metaphor. And that's what Antigone's doing here. You're getting about three metaphors per page in this play. Okay, That's one of the first ones. There's, they're all over the place. And what I want you to do is identify three and post them at the discussion area. And I'll respond to you. Okay? So here's one metaphor. Now watch this. Um, I'll go ahead and see if I can copy this. Um, oh, it's not letting me. Um, so they say that Creon has sworn that no one shall bury him, no one mourn for him. Um, let's see if I can um, delete that and um, let's see if I can copy this here. I'm kind of new at this. Copy. And then I come over to my summary. <clears throat> and I can just paste it there. This is my first metaphor. And I want you to get three. And now don't worry if you kind of screw it up, okay? That's okay. All right. <clears throat> First stage in the metaphor machine. Tell me what's literally going on. Okay. The um, Antigone is saying that the body of her brother will be torn apart and eaten by um, vultures and other scavengers okay that's literally what's going on what kind of language is she using no one shall bury him no one mourn for him but this body will lie in the field of sweet treasure for carrion birds she is describing his dead body as if it were a treasure 
um, like gold coins or other things that pirates would find. That's what she's doing. She's using the language of treasure to describe a dead body. There's no treasure there. That's Polynices' body. Okay? And then what I want you to do, third stage, is think about why use those words for this situation. Now, on the first two stages, um, everybody's going to agree that's literally a body left out in the dirt. Um, and everybody should agree that that's treasure. She's using the language of pirate's treasure. Um, let me put myself down there. That's pretty straightforward. The third stage is why these words in this situation. She uses these words because it shows, and this is what I think, and you, you could totally disagree with me, that's, that's okay with me, because it shows that in Creon's world, um, the vultures and other lowly um, animals are elevated to a higher status and are the ones who are rewarded. That's what I think is why she's using these words with this situation. Notice I want you to get three metaphors in three different situations, okay? So our three different I want you to break it down into three different stages. I want you to get three metaphors and then break those three metaphors into three different parts. Get in the in your first metaphor, I want you to get the literal level, the figurative level, and then I want you to tell me why you use those words in that situation. Then get another metaphor. And they're all over the place. You've got 490 lines, but I, I'm betting there's about 40 metaphors in there. Then with the second metaphor, describe what's literally going on. Then describe what kind of language is being used. And then tell me why those words are important for that situation. And then for the third metaphor, literally what's going on, what type of language is being used, and then tell me why that's important. It's very mechanistic, but it works every time. It's really kind of cool. It's kind, kind of like a lawnmower. So that's your metaphor machine. I want you to practice it at the discussion area. And then I post my reply, and there it is. And so that's kind of what you're going to have. But you're going to have instead of your your summary should be a little bit longer than this, maybe another paragraph. Um, and you should instead of having one metaphor, you should have three. So you've got you know a good deal of scribbling to do, but don't worry about things like spelling and all that. Just write that. Act like you're sitting in class and just got to tell everybody, hey, this is what's going on, and here are my three metaphors. And if you don't do it right, don't worry. This is why you're here. You're here to learn, right? At the discussion areas, I just want a good faith effort. That's what I want to see. Okay? It's just like in class. If you goof something up in class, you're okay, right? Everybody gets over it. Nobody cares. Nobody's going to say, oh, look at Dougie. He gave a bad answer. Let's go write his name on the bathroom wall. I don't do that anymore. Okay? So don't worry about that kind of stuff. Okay? So that's where we are. Now, just that's what I want everybody to focus on for the play right now. Do scenes one and two, then three and four, then five. Um, over the next few days, get something done like this. You're going to get really good at doing metaphors, and it's kind of cool when you get out of here. Um, on the assignment sheet, I want to show you that really fast um, because I don't want you to worry about it yet. I will go into the assignment sheet. Um, if we go into Classical Greek Tragedy, here it is. Here's the assignment sheet down here. Don't worry about it yet. We're going to be breaking down um, metaphors throughout the play. That's what we're going to be doing, but I'll walk you through that stage when we get there. So get the readings down now, get Antigone down now, have fun with it. I'll put some lectures up to follow on this, but for now, focus on understanding the play, and then look over the discussions that other people have identified, other metaphors. You're going to learn a lot from your fellow students, and hopefully from a little bit from these videos. You're going to learn a lot from reading what they've written, but again, write yours first and then learn what you can from everybody else, okay? So keep at it, guys. Um, and again, um, I always tell folks, um, be patient with yourself while you're learning. Um, be Understand I'm learning Canvas too, but we're getting this down. Um, be a little bit patient with me, um, but keep going at it. Um, you, everybody should be in the class, getting your discussions done, do your best. Um, I'm not going to be absolutely ruthless on the due dates with the discussion, but get it today or tomorrow, okay? Just try to so you don't fall behind. And we'll get on that essay in a couple of days, all right? Take care, folks.